Over to you, Veronica. Thanks, thanks, Jessica. And thank you everyone for making the time to, to be here. We appreciate it uh, so much. Um, this space today is a build up uh, and a follow up on uh, our commitment uh, with the new grant strategy in embedding learning as part of uh, us implementing the grant funding programs. Additionally, uh, we did uh, commit to use data to support that learning so that it's not just learning, uh, but that it's informed by data. Additionally, that we are intentionally creating space for people to cross learn uh, together. Um, and you know, this is us living to that commitment. We started, um, I think it was last year, uh, and Jessica will speak to this report's uh, period focus with um, clearly identifying what is the intended impact or the intention of areas that different partners within the region were intending to um, achieve different uh, levels, types of, of impact. Um, and after the intention, we've had about a six year, a six months. In some cases, some people have had a full year of uh, implementing their funding program. So the analysis is looking at both the midpoint and the final reports uh, of all the work you have done. Uh, and our hope is that we can. Um, Jessica, you. You're the only one who can mute. Um, uh, I will hope to share with you, um, uh, you know, the learnings that we are gaining from these reports. Uh, what are we learning? What are we seeing based on the reports you've shared with us? There's always the question of, okay, we're doing this report, but what does it lead to? We hope that you're also able to, number one, celebrate in, in the analysis that we have provided, but at the same time, lean, you know, step back and ask questions around what more do you hope a future report could include? So like I mentioned, this is a collective space for us to learn together, to learn what's happening across the regions. You will see in this group, we have, individuals who do not currently have, a, for example, a general support fund, but have been you know, very intentional in wanting to know what's happening in the region with other partners. So this is also that space for everyone to know, okay, I now understand that there's, for example, a focus on education, but what's the learning within education? Um, additionally, we hope by the end of um, this space that there is a sense that people feel I have something that I can take to my, you know, discussion with my team around the next funding proposal we make to focus on X or Y issues. Or maybe it will invite you to have a moment to reflect on areas of work that you've been working on to reflect, is this the direction we want to continue? Is this the direction we want to you know, uh, embrace more or strengthen? Uh, has is a different group doing something that you feel we've been trying to get into that that we haven't been able to? We do hope we can create space to make those connections amongst yourselves as well. Uh, so I'll stop here uh, and uh, pass it on to Jessica who will talk about Let's Connect and get into the report. Thank you. Um, so for those who haven't joined Let's Connect sessions before, we, we really want to grow in the MENA region. So we invite you to, to sign up, to start joining um, our learning clinics. It's a program that is very much community led and supported by the foundation. And the spirit is um, that we're here to, to have a good time, to enjoy learning together. Um, we wanna create a space where people feel comfortable and confident to share knowledge, to ask any questions, to talk about mistakes. And that no matter the experience in the movement, um, we can all learn from other people. And that's the spirit that we go into this conversation. Um, we're going to, do a general overview of the report. I'm so happy that most of you have read it um, completely, but I will just give a, an overview of some of the 
practical um, recommendations that come from the insights and we'll have a space where we can openly reflect on, on the report, um, what's useful, what we would like to see in future. And we were thinking as we're a small group not to do breakouts, but keep it as one group where we can have a discussion on two key insights in the report. Um, and as Veronica said, maybe come out with some next steps around how these can um, inform our grant proposals. Um, and we will we'll just give a big time to that discussion. And hopefully at the end, you'll give us some feedback. This is really an introduction to a conversation. Um, and we hope that this also um, incentivizes more peer discussions um, amongst affiliates and communities in the region. This is the etherpad for the whole session. If Veronica and Cassie can just help me link it in again. Um, please take notes um, as we present, as we discuss. Um, and Veronica mentioned the reporting is based on um, the, yeah. Sorry, just one second, I forgot to mention. I know you mentioned it, but I do want to mention it again for the group. We do have a few regional funding committee members for, for, for the MIA region, in case you're wondering who, who who's Joy, who's uh, Harriet, Bayel, uh, and, and, um, and others in the call who, or others who may join uh, because they're part of the you know, uh, funding decision-making body and, and process. We felt it was important for them to be part of this process. So just wanting to, to note that in case everyone is wondering, okay, who's that? Yeah. Sorry, Jessica. Yeah, and that's really important because something we've heard from the feedback forms that you've given us um, and from regional fund committee members is that we want more interaction um, be between the rounds of funding, more understanding of our work, more discussion on collective challenges and opportunities. So these spaces are to, to have that conversation with regional fund committee members. Thank you for those who joined. Um, so this reporting is based on the work that was done in 2022 and reported in the midterm and some of the final reports. And here, because we have few grantees in the region, we also included um, the Alliances Fund and a strategic partnership with Ideas Beyond Borders and a reading Wikipedia in the classroom grant. So this region tries to um, include beyond the general support, some other analysis as well as conversations you've had with Veronica and insights from people who are working in the region um, and are part of the foundation. But before going into the insights, I first wanna give you all a massive um, virtual applause. The work that we are capturing here is your work. It's what you do on the ground, many of you in your volunteer capacity. And it is so impressive, this work um, and all the programs you're developing, but also for taking the time to write this down, to report. It's sometimes painful to do reporting. Sometimes we feel like nobody's reading our reports. When I send you the report <laughs> that I put together based on what I was learning from your reports, I also feel that maybe nobody's reading it. So when you say that you've read it and it's useful, that makes me feel very happy. So I just want to really um, give you that applause because I know it's it's tough work. And thanks for coming here to take the time to reflect. So one of the first insights that we discovered is there's a lot of work in the region around education. And um, there's a lot of interesting things happening specifically in universities. So we're looking at um, work that has different outcomes. So some of you are focused on really working with you know, students, translators, experts to get high quality content on Arabic Wikipedia. Um, some are looking to grow the community through that student and university based and engaging really skilled editors. Some are working less on bringing in editors, but creating more general awareness in the educational sector about misconceptions about Wikipedia media in general in the region. 
And some are really focused on how Wikimedia and Wikipedia um, specifically can be used to develop um, really important media information and digital skills in the, in the region, but also seen as a professional development opportunity for youth in the region. So the, the report captures a lot of detailed examples of um, strategies that different grantees are using. I really invite you to go into some of those links and look in detail um, of what people have learned from those different strategies. And we're also seeing work in schools. Um, it's been less of a focus than universities, but we're looking at um, interesting examples of how reading Wikipedia in the classroom has been contextualized and taken into um, places like Morocco and taken to rural areas and adapted to the local context and how you're also innovating and you know going beyond just one training to actually follow up on teachers, develop courses. So a lot of interesting insights. But what are we seeing from these insights is that um, we're not really measuring in depth some of the impact that those efforts are making. So we're trying a lot of things. When I say we, it's like if I was a grantee in the region to not confuse we as the foundation. You as grantees are trying a lot of things, um, but we don't have um, clear measurements to know if we're reaching those outcomes. So are we, are we actually managing to um, grow our community through these students that we're bringing in? Are they sticking around? Are they, are they continuing to edit after we do all these efforts to train? Um, if bringing in new editors isn't the outcome, but we're just changing perceptions, are we really measuring that change in perception over time? Um, are we building some models of work that are sustainable. So sometimes we'll make a big effort to go to a university, train teachers and students, but what happens the next semester? What happens when there's no funding or partnership? How are we building a model that can be sustainable? And um, these are some of the questions that came from the report, some of the challenges. Um, so thinking about how we, how we can measure those outcomes how to think about retention that makes sense for these projects. So the foundation might be thinking that retention is a person who edits actively five times a month, but maybe for our programs, it's that we have a student cohort every month, every semester, and we continue to bring in new students, even if they don't continue to edit always actively. So retention might be different. So let's think collectively of what we think retention um, means for our the results we're trying to look for and let's capture the data and that takes time that takes investment that takes building skills in our teams to be able to capture that data um, the other thing that we we saw from the reporting is the need to really build more local organizer capacity in the region it's the region apart from being a small region with small number of grantees um, but a very low number of organizers that the grantees are bringing in through their projects and training those organizers to be able to train others. So we see um, in a lot of reports how dependent you are on one or two key editors. And if they weren't there, you wouldn't be able to expand your work. Um, the other challenge that we're seeing is how to continue to engage that active editor base. So we have a lot of editors that aren't involved really in grantee work in the region. Um, and you've done a lot of things to try to involve them and um, measuring that and seeing if that's working is, is, is important um, in future work. Mm -hmm. The other thing that drew my attention is you're really good at documentation. It's one of the few regions where you'll say, I have a training course or a training plan and you link it in. And this is so valuable. You have a whole resource base of lesson plans, of online courses, of tutorials. So I invite you to think about how we can share these resources and not build them always from scratch um, and share the models that you're developing um, in these different programs. The second thing is around regional collaboration and um, partnerships for organizational development. So we're seeing in the region that 
Um, a lot of grantees are emerging user groups. They may, when I say emerging, is that you may have been working for many, many years, but in terms of your organizational structure, it's quite new. You're transitioning from being mostly volunteer to having a few paid staff members to building your teams. And there's really interesting signs of how you're focused on really learning about what's working for you as a team, like what type of project management skills you need, how to, um, to learn from your work. There's a lot of reflection about what's working, what's not working. Um, however, um, oh, sorry, and there's also a new um, tendency to be more connected to um, movement campaigns. So in the region, few grantees, but we're seeing um, more participation in climate change and gender and starting to think about GLAM. Um, however, you're recognizing in your reports that you really need to build more inclusive government structures that fits this kind of growth path that you're taking and how to promote, promote new forms of leadership, particularly for women in the region um, that many see today as a, as a barrier. How, how do new leaders participate in these structures? Um, there also are funding. There's a perception that there's funding limitations in some countries that that, re that restriction isn't there. What we need to do is build um, the support system so people can access funding. But we also need to um, think of how we can work together in the region. So if in one region funding is more difficult um, because of restrictions or because of um, capacity, then how can we maybe build joint partnerships in the region to get to those areas that aren't being today funded? The report shows the all the countries that today aren't receiving funds um, because of, 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 of that work that needs to be done. Um, the other thing is, is that there's a lot of discussion in capacity building in how, what, what are the organizational needs at the moment? Um, some of the things that were prioritized by you are how to manage volunteers, working on communication skills, um, how to better access and use data, so learning and evaluation, and also in conflict transformation. So when there is conflict within the community or within new and existing leaders, how, how do we build skills to, to transform that conflict into something positive? And an interesting reflection is, why don't we think of ways in which those capacities could be built collectively? as a type of hub service or regional service. There's a lot of organizations in the region, um, non-Wikimedian organizations that are experts on these types of topics. How do we think of a service where it's not each grantee is thinking of how to build and invest this, um, these capacity building um, plans within their individual grants, but it's thought of something collectively. So that's an, I kind of reflection that came out of the reporting. The second insight is about um, the real intention that you have to improve and scale quality content, particularly on Arabic Wikipedia. Um, there's a lot of interest around local language, culture, and history. That's like a big motivation in the region. And you're exploring tactics to improve quality um, and measure that quality. So more training around sourcing, around translation, around working with experts, academics, um, more support for new editors so that they can correct different, you know, quality issues. Um, collective list building is something we're seeing how to work with students and teachers so that they can define what contents they want to write about. Um, so this is a strong area of focus and there's a lot of interesting work going on. Um, Specifically on Wikipedia, less so on Wikidata, on Wikicommons. There's an opportunity there to grow in the region. Um, but we're looking at um, very small scale contributions. If we look at the big knowledge gap and content gap that exists in the MENA region. And so one question that came from the reporting is how do we scale this content creation? Is it possible just through this volunteer force 
with these efforts that you're making in education, or do we need to think of ways of scaling this content through GLAM partnerships, which isn't something that's been very strong in the region, or through more participation in global campaigns? Um, and obviously, this requires staff, it requires long term planning. And this is something that should perhaps be part of the discussion of the new um, the grant proposals. How to include also tools that exist. Um, several of you are experimenting with automated translation tools um, so that some of the work can be done with artificial intelligence, but other um, the quality control is done by humans. So exploring technology to be able to um, to scale the content contribution is, I think, an interesting thing to for the region to look at. And as I also mentioned in the session we had with um, Sub-Saharan Africa, there are a lot of newcomer tools um, for on wiki contribution and few grantees are using them in their training. Um, I've linked in a presentation there on what some of those newcomer tools are that are available on Arabic Wikipedia. So I encourage you to start looking at that. And we've held some trainings on how to, to use those tools. Um, the fourth insight is around knowledge transfer through partners and particularly um, how can we learn from partners who come in through strategic partnerships or through the alliances fund and how to best work with um, those partnerships. Um, we've learned, I think this might come up in the in the group reflection that it's really important when alliance fund partners or people like um, ideas beyond borders. When they come in, they have an early and better connection to user groups, and they're there to build capacities and play a supportive role, not to replicate, um, but to really transfer knowledge and build new knowledge that can be useful for the existing community. Um, it's important that um, user groups are clear on their responsibilities and the resourcing needed to, to engage these new editors organizers after a partner has done some work. So let's say Ideas Beyond Borders did work in universities in Iraq. And then if that wants to be transferred to the user group, um, how do we make sure that we have the capacity to continue that work, to adapt that work, to work with those students that were engaged? Um, and also, how do we use the knowledge that they've documented and that can be transferred to the user group. So um, a, a worry here is, you know, how do we make sure that those alliance fund partners or strategic partners that developed work can then transfer that to the, to the community um, user groups affiliates. The final insight is around, um, oh, I think there is a, There is a problem with the title of this. The second insight was around social media. Um, and I really had a lot of fun navigating all your social media channels because you said that social media was so important to engage new audiences, to bring in some of those teachers in rural areas, to bring in um, people who aren't connected to the Wikimedia world. And it's really interesting to see how you're using social media to um, create visibility um, in, in the ecosystem of free knowledge and how you're using it as well to engage communities that come in through the training. However, um, very few grantees are actually beyond saying we have this number of followers um, or these number of likes are actually showing how using social media and when I say social media, it's Facebook, Instagram, but also, you know, WhatsApp, Telegram, and all these channels you set up um, in how we're making sure that people are actually coming in because we're making these efforts on social media. So when people come to an event, how do I track that they came to the event through social media? How do I make sure that that WhatsApp group that I've set up or that Telegram group is actually a key factor for people to be retained and engaged, or they're just looking at it there and they're not doing very much with it. Um, so uh, an invitation here is how can we work with some teams, um, external organizations, or even within the foundation, there's an audience insight team that can maybe support um, the grantees to have 
tools to measure um, social media impact. There are several that that um, that are out there um, in to be used because we have to really measure if those efforts that we're making on social media, posting, investing funds is really bringing the those results that we want. And if we should continue to invest and scale that. Then finally, what can the foundation do to, to be more supportive of grantees? And this is the big message for us is um, all of what's in the report. And when we say more has to be done, it's not that the grantees and you as affiliates and user groups or organizers have to carry that responsibility. The idea is that this is useful so you can think about, OK, I should be investing in this. I should be training in this. I should be adjusting my program based on this learning from a peer. But a lot of this also is our responsibility as a foundation. How do we improve our support? And this is what we've learned from, from your reporting. So how these are six key ideas. Um, how do we support this knowledge transfer between grantee partners? How do we make these sharing of resources um, easier for you? Um, how do we support you so you're really investing in that those measurements that can look at longer term impact, specifically in education work where you have very clear outcomes, but not very clear ways of measuring those outcomes? Um, how can we find local partners, as I said, that can provide capacity building that's contextualized, that's relevant for the MENA region, um, culturally, linguistically, socially, in those areas, those four areas that you have prioritized? And maybe how can we do that collectively, as I mentioned? How can we support GLAM partnerships? Um, how can the team within the foundation that works in GLAM look at what opportunities there are in the region to start building those partnerships. And we know this requires staff and capacities. So how do we start funding this um, within uh, our, our, our next round of, of, of grants? Um, and as I mentioned, we also need to work on helping you with better data definition. So what do we mean by retention? What tools are available? to be able to measure retention and make sure that grantees have access to training to use those tools. I won't lie, today there aren't very good tools, but there are some solutions um, and we're looking at creating some templates and some training to use um, pause to run some of the queries um, on retention. So you can start measuring some of these things until better dashboards are, are developed for this in future. I'll stop there. I think I went over a little bit. I get very excited about the MENA region because I read all the reports <laughs> and wrote this one um, myself. So I, uh, I hope that was useful. And the idea now is that we can go onto the Etherpad, take um, five minutes quiet thinking time to write some of your thoughts on these two questions. What was something that um, was interesting that you learned from the report that you could perhaps take into your next grant application or your first grant application? And what would you like to see in future reports? Maybe something that was missing. Um, and there's a space there for any open questions as well. So we'll take five minutes. Um, you can use the, the chat as well if you prefer to the etherpad and we'll come back to share together.